Why is this a thing? Baby skeletons should not be a thing. Agency Brady, what did you do? Hey, what's up guys, Second Kirby here, back again with another mod in Minecraft tutorial. Oh yeah, so today's topic, the alloy smelter from Ender.io. This is an interesting block, it acts as both an alloy smelter and a furnace. So, this is an RF powered smelter, so for my sakes, I'm just going to put a creative energy cell on top. See, it's accepting power. So, if we take a look at the recipe, let's see what we got. So, the, the recipe, you need three furnaces, four iron ingots, a cauldron, and a machine chassis. The machine chassis are made with four iron, four iron bars, and a basic capacitor. And then the basic capacitor is made with one copper, four gold, and two redstone. I would recommend using any eye for like uh, any tech mods because I figured it might be hard to memorize the recipes. Anyway, the alloy smelter is a crucial machine if you if you want to progress further in Ender.io. Oh, and uh, another little tip: the and uh, the alloy smelter can smelt three items at once. So you take a look through three cobblestone in there. It's a uh, it's processing it, it's processing it all at once, though it takes three times as long. It, it takes three times as long as you, uh, if, as if you just threw one, uh, if you just threw one item in there. See, significantly faster if you throw one item, but since I threw four, uh, since I threw three, it's, it did all of them at once. And also, a little tip, if you have, uh, if you have um, thermal foundation, and thermal expansion and thermal dynamics and anything COFH. Um, you can actually make the thermal foundation alloys in this furnace. You don't have to have an induction smelter. Though, like I said, if you want to progress further in Ender.io, you need this machine. The thermal expansion induction smelter will not work with any Ender.io alloys. But there is a, there is a really cool shortcut at making enderium. See, let me show you. It requires two enderium base, one pyrothium dust, and two ender pearls. The enderium base is made with two tin, one silver, and one shiny ingot in the alloy smelter. That's the easy part. That requires 4,000 RF per tick. The alloy smelter for ender enderium requires 50,000 RF. See. So, I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah, it does. Oh, wait. <laughs> One more thing. Just like any other Ender I.O. machine, you can configure any side to be push, uh, push, pull, push slash pull, or disabled. If you, if you, click, this, if you click this configure I.O. button and then right click on any side, it'll switch between those modes. And as well, you can put a double layer capacitor or an octothick capacitor in here. The double layer capacitor will double uh, double its speed and double its energy. In uh, let's see, uh, let's get the let's get that capa uh, let's get those capacitors. So the double layer capacitor will double its uh, it will double the uh, energy it'll double the energy storage, but it will triple the uh, it'll triple the energy usage. Though it will also go twice as fast. So, and the octothick capacitor will, uh, the octothick capacitor will uh, quintuple the energy inputs and out uh, and usage. And though it'll it'll go like it'll go really fast. All right, so that'll be it for this tutorial. I will be doing more on Ender.io and Thermal Expansion and any other tech mods that I feel are necessary. I'll also do more on magic-based mods like Thawncraft and Batania. figure those might be helpful as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to tweet, post a comment, or post a comment to this post on Google+. Plus. Really, It would really help me out, and uh, I'd, really, I'd really like to help you guys out with your knowledge on the mods. So. 
Until the next tutorial, thanks for watching and see you next time. Later.